Okay guys, thanks for sticking with me on all of these videos. I know they're pretty riveting. Um, so we are going to look at another newspaper database, but this one's different from LexisNexis Academic. Totally, totally different. That's the nice thing about library resources. There's not a whole bunch of overlap, so when you search from one database to the next, you're actually finding new information pretty much every time. We try to avoid overlap. Anyway, here we are at the Marriott Library's website, and this is where we'll usually start unless we're using the open web. And I've already clicked on the article databases tab. If you are here, that's not too much of a great move. Um, so we're looking at ProQuest Newsstand, clicking on the P, because that's what ProQuest starts with, and scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to the PRs. And notice two ProQuest databases. Well, one is called ProQuest Databases. And surprise, we don't actually want that one. We want this one, ProQuest Newsstand. Um, again, check out the awesome synopsis here. Full text of many, though not all, U.S. and international news sources. So this will include big papers like the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, stuff like that. It also has some of the Tribune and Deseret News, local papers, which is great. Click on the title, and ta-da, another totally different interface. But you'll notice in every database that we look at, there will always be a search box near the top right here. Um, if you scroll down, I just want to point out they, they highlight some of the big papers here that you have access to through this database. If you click on view title list, it'll open, I think, a Word doc or an Excel doc that has a complete list of publications. But you don't have to do that unless you're curious, and then you may. So here is our search box. We can restrict to full text, but I would recommend that you don't do that um, because even if something isn't available in full text, I can usually help you get it. So don't freak out if you find something that isn't full text. We may do that, this this example. Probably not, though. So we're going to mix it up hardly at all. And I'm still going to search for electric cars. Oh, but check this out. It gives me, kind of like Google, some suggested searches. This is really cool. Um, electric cars, and since I'm still looking for corporate information and Ford, why not? not Nissan this time. There's the mixing it up. So then I'll click enter and it will produce a results list, a really giant results list. Look at that, 66,000 results. If I scroll down, here is my awesome results list and it's organized by relevance. Um, the only reason I point out how things are organized is because you may not really be so concerned with um, how a database establishes relevance versus how timely a publication is. So, for example, if you're researching nuclear power, you probably don't want to look at articles from the 1970s. Things are pretty different now. So, same with electric cars um, and many of the other sustainable technologies that you're probably researching. Sure, you want to look at history a little bit, but um, at this stage in your research, look for the most up-to-date information that you can find. And some of them, probably not newspapers, will give you a little bit of historical context. Um, unlike the other databases we're looking at, the menu in the right-hand margin, rather than left-hand margin, helps you to narrow your results, which is a really, really good idea for this sample search because we have like a gazillion or 66,000, something like that. Um, at the bottom, this is really cool, you can enter a date range and I would totally recommend doing that. So say I want really current information from, oh, we'll just say the past five years, so 2006 to current month, beginning of the month, 2011, and then it will update and let's see how the numbers change. 26,000, that's pretty good, two-thirds fewer results. We can continue to narrow that though. Let's look at publication type. And all of these, see how they have little 
um, titles here. If you were to look at document type, it'll have categories. Anyway, beside each of those, there's going to be a number of articles associated with that subcategory. So let's start with, or and probably end with, the Wall Street Journal. 664 titles, that is way more manageable than 26,000, right? And here they are, and I'm going to organize them with the most recent first. Click sort button. Um, as this loads, here we go. Um, if you if you decide that you don't want to narrow your search, you can clear it at any time here or here. But I would recommend that you continuously narrow your results list because even 600 results is way too many. The litmus test should be. How many titles am I actually willing to look at? So if that's 25, then make that your goal. Um, anyway, you'll notice that most of these articles are going to give you a full text option. Or or not. <laughs> or they'll show you also things like images. But most of them, I think, are going to be in full text. Especially if you're looking at like the, only the past five years worth of information. All that stuff is digitized, right? For the most part. Anyway, um, so you can click on a full text and go directly to the article here, or clicking on this title will also take you directly to the article. I'll show you, just so you believe me. Um, Ta-da, there's the full text. Nice. But if I were going to be an efficient researcher, and I, I do recommend doing this, read the citation abstract first. So here's the abstract. 50 words, way faster to read than, oh, I don't know, 400, right? It's not a, 400 won't take forever, but you may as well save yourself some time. Um, the thing about newspaper article titles is that they're kind of catchy, right? But they're not particularly illustrative of the content. So, I mean, this one's pretty good, but some of them are kind of vague. Like this one, Corporate News, Corporate Watch, what is that about? Fortunately, it gives you a little excerpt beneath each title that shows your keywords highlighted in the context, so that is nice. Um, but yeah, that's that's this database in a nutshell. Um, oh, one thing I, I want to tell you before I sign off. Um, if you want to, you can select a whole bunch of articles. I'm just going to select the first five. Why not? And then you can do some kind of batch operation with them. You can email them to yourself. You can print them. You can get citations, though this database probably doesn't have IEEE. It will have the more major citation styles like APA, MLA. You can export. You can save it to a file. So this is kind of cool. If you email them to yourself, it'll just open up a new window and you can actually email multiple addresses. So say all of your teammates, your name, change the subject so you have some clue of what you're being sent, right? And then you can pick a citation style. So they don't have IEEE, sorry guys, but hey, next semester this will be great. And then you go ahead and email yourself. And that's it. That is ProQuest Newspapers, well, Newsstand, in a nutshell. If you have questions, call, email, ask me in class and I'll help you out however I can.